common misconception, is that Arab forces attacked Israel just after its proclamation of independence. Reality is different. 369 Arab villages had already been destroyed by Zionist force, even before proclamation of independence of Israel. Zionist forces including Hagen, and terrorist groups like Irgun had already been imposed war on Arabs inside and outside of the proposed Jewish state since December 1947. Objective of these attacks were to occupy whole Palestine. In November 1947, United Nations announced Palestine Partition Plan granting 55% of Palestinian territory to 32% Jews. Majority of these Jews were settled there during British mandate. Zionists were, however, not happy with this division. They had wanted to get all of the so-called promised land covering the Egyptian areas in the east of the Nile, northwest of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, regions in the Persian Gulf, part of Iraq, Syria, southeast Turkey, Cyprus and the whole of historical Palestine. So, even during the British mandate they had started attacking and occupying over Arabs and their UN-designated territories. In fact, from April to May 1948, Zionist forces carried out 13 major attack over Muslims and their territories. Although Arab forces started advancing on 15th of May, Zionist forces had already attacked Jerusalem on 14th of May, 1948. Second misconception is about power imbalance against Israel, as it is supposed that it was fighting alone against six Arab armies. But a different reality can be seen in number comparisons. At the beginning of the war, Israel 35,000, Arabs 13,000 soldiers. In the middle, Israel 90,000, Arabs 51,000 soldiers, and at the end of the war, Israel 117,000, Arabs 63,000 soldiers. A large number of Arab civilian died as Zionist attacked indiscriminately. 13,000 Arab civilian died as compared to 2,000 Jewish civilian. In war, Jewish military losses were double than Arabs. 4,000 Zionist soldiers died as compared to 2,000 Arab soldiers. Zionist factories were already producing a large number of weapons and ammunition even during the British mandate. If any Arab had been caught with a pistol, he had to face severe penalty. During March 1948, on average, Zionists were producing 100 submachine guns daily. France, Italy, Czechoslovakia, US, Soviet Russia and even Germany provided arms to the Zionists. Biggest supply containing 50 million loads of ammunition came from Czechoslovakia with the help of France. Czechoslovakia and France also provided thousands of other weapons. Italy provided 40 Sherman tanks which proved decisive. For Palestinians, there was strict arms embargo. Palestinians made various deals for weapon supplies. France particularly actively blocked any supply to the Arabs. Jews on the other hand had a long experience of human trafficking, and they had help of French intelligence agencies. Zionist armed groups had 350 British officers on leading positions. Various Jewish regiments had fought during World War I and World War II along with Allied forces. In 1920, these regiments L formed Hoganah, a Zionist military group. Hoganah later on renamed as Israel Defense Forces. Arab armies had fewer number of trained officers. 35 British officers in Jordanian army were ordered to leave Palestine by British government during the war. However, this Arab legion defeated Zionist army in Jerusalem.
France also helped in establishing wireless network to the Zionist groups. Use of Hebrew also proved helpful for Zionist forces and it was hard to understand for Arabs. Arabs, with no intelligence training, managed various intelligence operations on their own. Although, Israel well survived this war its notorious Plan D was failed due to Arab reaction. According to this plan they wanted to occupy whole of the Palestine and particularly Jerusalem. Various Zionist attacks over Jerusalem were not only repelled by Arab armies but also Zionist forces had to surrender there. Learn more details about the Plan D, and other three plans of Zionists from the historical documents of Israeli government, stay connected.